Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share with you a well kept secret. It's uh, how to do the pleat. So I'm going to show you right now a little sample of what I'm talking about and I'm going to show you first how to do the tool to make your pleat and then how to use it. Before starting the tool I want to show you what you're going to be able to do with the tool that we're going to do. So these are single pleat, full single pleat, little sample only, but you could do the size that you want. Here are uh, wider pleats, so the distance between the pleat is double. Or here, a combination of both, so two full pleats and a bigger space. Uh, you could sew ribbon or other fabric over your fabric before doing the pleating to get different effects. Or you could even do your pleat with two different different layer of fabric. You could also use it and pr do the pressing only on the side to control and make nice drape. So these are the kind of pleat that we'll be able to do. So I suggest that to start, just to understand how it works and also uh, to be able to calculate on the size of your cardboard that you'll need. You could just start with a little piece like the size of a, a normal paper. But for this example, I'll do a big one. So I use a cardboard, a big piece. And what you're going to do is on both sides, you're going to mark every single centimeter. This is for my example of pleat of one centimeter deep. So every single centimeter. So when you're finished marking your centimeter on both sides, you're going to place your ruler or your meter at the third uh, line that you did because we need to keep a space without the pleating. So I'm placing my ruler, hold it tight and then go with your awl and trace to engrave your cardboard. Uh, the next thing to do is just to verify before doing too many pleats to make sure that it's going to fold easily. If not, do it again a little a strong, a little stronger and you're going to do every single mark all the way until the third line at the other end of your cardboard. So when you're finished with all your line en engraved, you're going to fold every single one both directions. So you could start folding towards the top because it's easier. Every single line. And when you're done toing, folding towards the top, you're going to do the same thing over, folding the other way around. So when you finish soften the crease on both sides uh, from the top, you're going to use the second uh, crease to lift it up and send it towards the end of the cardboard. And you're going to repeat that all the way. So not the first crease, the second one and fold it towards the end of the paper. When you have a few done, you could use paper clip to hold them together or put weight over your cardboard to make sure they stay in position. Just like that or paper clip. And you continue. Now that all my pleats are done and they all have the right direction, 
So if you notice, the top crease is one on three line. Every three line is creased towards the top, and they're all folding in one direction. So now uh, you're going to go to your ironing board, and you're going to press your pleat. The cardboard should be completely flat. So you could do a few at a time. It doesn't really matter if you put steam. If you need you put some steam, they have to become completely flat. So I'm doing a few at a time. And already you see that they stay more close. And go over. It does take a little time to, to make your tool, but remember it's a tool, so you'll be able to use it over and over for all your project. So it's worth to take your time and do accurate job also. So when you finish pressing, uh, by the way, if you do have your clapper, it's time to use it because of the weight and also the wood uh, takes the, all the humidity uh, and it dries faster. So it's time to use them when you could remove them and your cardboard with the pleat is completely flat. It's time to do the last uh, step for no our tools. It's to turn it around. Prepare two pieces of fusible, pretty much the same size as your tool. I usually cut with uh, cut the fusible one time in one direction and the other grain line for the second piece. So you put the glue side towards your pleat and I'm going to turn it around. Oops, no, just like that is fine. And you're going to iron your fusible over your pleat. So again, you must keep it completely flat. So you're going to use your clapper again. You do one layer at a time. And I am using steam. It just go faster. So now you're going to make sure you wait until it's completely dry and cold and then we'll do the same thing for the second layer. It's very important that you wait until everything is cold and dry and then we'll almost be ready to use our tool. So you could see the pleating and only the, the part that you fold towards the top is the lifting, the other part is sticking to the fusible. Now uh, it's going to be your choice, you could either cut the excess of fusible straight or just fold it or just fold it and fuse it towards the top, so it's up to you. Now that the tool is ready, and I remove, in that case I remove the excess of fusible, I'm ready to test it. So I'm going to show you how to do your pleat. So you start parallel with, the, you see my salvage parallel to my tool, and I'm going to start just with my nail. I'm going to lift the first pleat on the tool and just push towards both sides. So you do it from the middle, next pleat, and you push towards the side. So after a few pleats, you could already press them to make sure they're going to remain done. And you continue, so from the middle, and push towards the side. Uh, if you don't have nails, it might be also a good idea to use uh, a plastic card that you have such as credit card and use it to push that's also an idea it could be easier for you that way also so always lift in the middle and push both direction so when you're done with all your pleat 
give another press if you're scared that your fabric uh, change color you could put your another piece of fa fabric over to protect your fabric and make sure you give ste steam because you have to cook your pleat there's also uh, another little thing that you could use I'll show you right after with my second demo that you could put over and see your fabric so you press cook your pleat I use again the clapper and wait until it's completely cold so here's the, the thing that I, I use to press when I want to see over if everything is okay so it's called an ironing protective cloth it costs like one or two dollar and it's very practical to do your ironing without damaging your fabric so here's my uh, example now it's all cold so it's time to remove it so you could just roll a bit and remove and see your pleat so after you finish and you removed it you could go and stitch your pleat flat just with a stay stitch and you could cut the shape that you like so if you want to do a hem to your piece right away so at the bottom you should press your hem before doing the pleat so the crease will be done opposite in the inside and you'll have a perfect pleat even after doing your pleats that's it for today and if you wish to have this tool that I did today, tag three of your friends in your comment and ask them to subscribe to my channel for a chance to win. Bye and I see you next time.